I'm sure you've seen it. Everybody, pretty much everybody has. All these so-called geniuses claiming that Tesla's 4680 battery cells won't work. They're not actually feasibly economically possible. That CHL is miles ahead of them. That BYD's batteries are miles ahead of them. That cylindrical cells are simply not the solution to the world's energy needs. But it seems as though those people might have all been wrong. Very, very wrong. Here is why BMW and General Motors appear to have changed their minds and decided that Tesla's strategy was the right one after all. My friends, this is one of the most interesting studies of the electric vehicle industry and the future battery technology we will see in our cars in history. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name's Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. Love to see you all at Fully Charged Live here in Australia. It's actually not very far away now, about six weeks away. And then, of course, in Farnborough, which is in April, around the 28th and 29th of April. You can get your tickets on the Fully Charged website. I'll put a link in the description below. And also, I want to say a big shout out and thank you to our Patreon supporters, YouTube members. You guys really help this channel go. You really help me actually at the moment, considering my current situation. My boys are here with me. I'm basically looking after them full time at the moment because Shanna is in uh, Thailand getting treatments for her stage four cancer. If you want to know more about that, I'll put a link in the description below to the GoFundMe campaign that we set up to try and help us afford the $11,000 to $12,000 per week expense. Basically because here in Australia, they said, uh, yeah, you don't have much chance. So I'll put a link in the description. Thank you all for your support. It's been just mind blowing. Really, I really didn't expect this level of help and I really needed it. And you guys have come through. So thank you so much. However, getting back to this issue, it's very important because it is true that all these so-called engineering geniuses who claim they know everything about new battery technology, they do. It's in the comments. I can share with you many, many comments of people going into the details on why Tesla is miles behind CATL. That's exactly what they say, word for word, miles behind using old battery technology. 4680 can battery cells are not the future of the battery industry. They say they've convinced you of that. You know why I know they've convinced you of that? Not all of you, but many of you, because I've seen the likes on these comments. They get zero down votes and hundreds of likes. Seriously, people are believing this stuff by these so-called expert engineers who are posting in forums and basically tricking people. Now, if General Motors and BMW came together as entire organizations and decided that, yes, actually, we will make enormous decisions, enormous structural decisions, which will affect our future planning, which mean we have to change most of what we're doing today in order to actually make our vehicles capable of using 4680 cells, then maybe there's a reason. It appears Clean Technica and South Korea, well, have discovered what this reason is. And it appears as though this is the key reason for why General Motors and LG Energy Solutions have now parted ways. This is a huge development. And it shows the future of the battery industry very well may not be what we thought it was, especially if that future includes a hybrid LMFP battery that Tesla reportedly have been working on. A report by South Korea's The Elec claims that General Motors is planning to stop using pouch cells in its future electric cars. What's it going to do with the three factories it's building right now? Who knows? And switch to cylindrical cells. What? Hang on a minute. I thought pouch cells were better, you engineers. The move has caused some stress in the relationship between General Motors and its primary battery supplier, says Clean Technica which is LG Energy Solutions. And it's led to the cancelling of GM's fourth factory, which was in partnership with LG. Who's LG going to use as this new battery supplier? No one seems to know yet. There's some speculation about it though. The two companies, GM and LG, have agreed to jointly construct and operate three battery factories in the US. One is already in operation right now in Ohio, providing their vehicles while providing Ultium batteries to Ultium GM vehicles today. The two others are under construction, one in Michigan and the other in Tennessee. Is it possible that those two new factories could actually start making cylindrical cells instead of pouch cells? Well, at this point it absolutely is. They haven't fit them out yet with battery manufacturing facilities, so it's certainly very possible. What would happen if that were to be the case? No one knows. A fourth factory was planned for Indiana 
this latest decision has been cancelled. GM and LG have come to loggerheads and it appears as though they've actually had some sort of confrontation which has led to this factory just being cancelled, saying that GM are reportedly reaching out to at least one other battery manufacturer. I'm going to guess numerous other manufacturers. Now there's a lot of, not a lot of details about this, but we do know that sources in South Korea believe General Motors are planning on using 4680 battery cells, first used by Tesla, and within the last six months, announced to be being used for most BMW electric cars within the next few years. So I'm curious, everyone's curious, why is this happening? Why is the industry, or large parts of it, starting to move towards 4680s? It doesn't seem to make sense, according to all these expert engineers. And here it is, cylindrical cells may be much, much easier to mass manufacture than pouch cells. Since production techniques have been in use since the Carter administration, say Cleantechnica, which could make them a lower cost option at a time when battery material prices are rising. Now, here's where it actually changes economies of scale. When you can manufacture, say, say thousands of Coke cans on one production line, it's much quicker possibly than manufacturing a different format. And that's where the economies start to change. Once we're talking about millions and millions of cars per year or, or the equivalent in battery manufacturing, the economies change drastically versus the current production we're looking at today. Kyle Field initially said that this new form factor eliminates tabs, increases energy density, maintains similar thermal characteristics of smaller cells, improves power to weight ratio, streamlines manufacturing, key point, streamlines manufacturing, and lowers cost. However, it seems as though most of the industry didn't believe him and still doesn't. But that does seem to be some very compelling reasons for why 4680 cells are a good idea. And why, in fact, even though the industry has largely criticized Tesla and said that they're wrong on 4680s, that now battery manufacturers are starting to say, well, maybe Tesla was right. Maybe General Motors have recognized the advantages to Tesla's strategy and decided it's not too late to change course. Iktida Ali said this, one intriguing idea behind the 4680 cell is its 80 millimeter height, which enables continuous motion cell manufacturing. I'm gonna repeat that, continuous motion cell manufacturing, similar to bottle production at beverage companies. That speeds up cell production compared to current procedures practiced at Giga Nevada's cell manufacturing facility, and possibly in comparison to pouch cells. Since then, everyone has decided, well, not everyone, but many companies are now deciding that the 4680 format actually makes a lot of sense. A lot more sense than the pretend online forum engineers are claiming. Panasonic, Tesla's partner at Gigafactory Nevada, got busy right away designing a prototype 4680 cell for Tesla. And Panasonic themselves said, we have developed this because of the strong desire of the other party, Tesla and we think this can only lead to stronger ties. However, it's possible there's more to that story. CATL is the world's largest battery manufacturer, and it hasn't exactly been standing still while Panasonic eats its lunch. Well, that's what Clean Technic says. Now, I don't agree with that in, at all, because realistically, CATL, if anything, is extending its lead on all other battery manufacturers worldwide except BYD, and that's thanks to lithium iron phosphate cell production. However, New LMFP battery chemistries may be used in 4680 cells, and this would be a significant advantage. LMFP batteries utilize lithium iron phosphate chemistries, meaning costs are lower, but by using more manganese, they can actually halve the amount of lithium needed per cell. If you combine that chemistry with the ability to mass manufacture at huge speed, 4680 cylindrical cells, it could actually be an advantage in the future to CATL's current methodology. Right now, CATL though thinks it has a significant lead on everyone, including Tesla. Wu Kai, chief scientist for CATL said that the company's new Kirin battery, or Kirin battery as I call it, has 13% more power than a battery pack using 4680 cells. And the key reason for that is volumetric energy density. CATL believes that these packs are more dense because of the way they're actually put together. It's not the individual cells themselves that are actually more powerful than Tesla cells. It's that CATL's third generation cell to pack technology is able to put more batteries 
into the same space occupied in a 4680 battery pack. But whether or not that remains the case, once we start seeing LMFP chemistries is an entirely different matter. The secret they say is in the packaging, not a new breakthrough in battery chemistry, although I believe that isn't correct. Wu said the Kieran battery leads the industry in system weight, energy density, and volumetric energy density. We have analyzed the range distribution of passenger cars in the last three years and found that consumers quest for long range is still a trend. Interestingly, those battery packs have already gone into vehicles being manufactured in China by Geely, enabling up to 1,000 kilometers of range. They do work. Since then, Tesla has found that scaling up production of 4680 batteries is taking quite a while. It's taking longer than the company had hoped. However, in the meantime, Samsung SDI, Panasonic, and other battery companies have announced that they would be manufacturing 4680 size batteries as well. And of course, now that BMW and General Motors want to use cylindrical cells, this industry could be about to explode. The elect has said the companies could stack two levels of 4680 cells on top of the other to create a dual level battery pack, which could offer benefits such as better control of battery cell temperatures within the pack. So what will General Motors do with its Ultium cell production? Or will it even follow through with it and continue making Ultium cells? Well, it may be too late for them, at least at its first factory, of course. That factory, I believe, will continue manufacturing Ultium cells. However, their follow-up factories, the second and third, may actually change tack. Now, GM revealed its Ultium batteries, and the US press has been glowing of them, saying how wonderful they are. This is what GM said. Unlike traditional cylindrical battery cells, our high energy pouch cells have a modular design. Ultium's long pouch cells waste less space and can stack on top of each other like pancakes or vertically like slices of toast. This simple modular design makes it easy for engineers to optimize energy density and vehicle layout, which translates to more miles on a single charge for less cost. Our Ultium cells pack a punch. It would take 20 small cylindrical can cells, the ones our competitors use, to produce the power of one Ultium large format 100 amp hour cell. Our Ultium cells are so robust, they can electrically and physically support EVs of every shape and size. Our battery options scale from 50 kilowatt hours to over 200, which will enable a GM estimated range of 300 miles or more on a full charge. And then they said, stacking battery pouch cells enables flexible engineering and a more comfortable ride. We'll engineer some of America's most popular vehicles trucks, SUVs, and crossovers with vertically stacked cells, like toast, whereas performance vehicles, which are deeply embedded in our DNA, may include horizontally stacked cells, like pancakes. GM's ability to stack long pouch cells vertically or horizontally in modules is unique to the industry, and it gives us an advantage over everyone else. To save even more space, the battery's electronic components will be embedded within the modules, eliminating 80% of the battery pack wiring compared to today's batteries. We reduce the height of the battery module underneath the second row, which will not only give second row passengers a more comfortable ride, but also adds 22 kilowatt hours of energy storage in this space. In other words, GM is saying, and has been saying for years, that pouch cells are way superior to cylindrical cells. They have the answer while Tesla does not. However, if this is true that GM are considering moving away from pouch cells, or at least that is the key reason why they have divorced themselves from LG Chem on this fourth battery facility, one has to ask the question, are these common engineers really experts? Do they really know what they're talking about? Or was Tesla actually onto the right solution all along? Well, no one knows for sure. But considering the current move by BMW and it appears now General Motors towards 4680 cylindrical cells, it appears as though maybe Tesla actually were right on this. And maybe they just have a head start over everyone else. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and thank you for watching.